Welcome back to Senior Savvy Cannabis. I'm Katherine Goldberg. Today, we're going to talk about the five ways cannabis helps reduce and manage pain. The most common concern I get from the community is, how do I manage my pain? Especially, how do I manage my pain when I don't necessarily want to be stoned off my ass? It's it's a balance and it's possible. So I believe when we understand why things work the way they do, we are able to make better choices that suit us. So the point of this episode today is to go through just a little bit of the science so that next time you go into a dispensary, you can pick out a product that you're confident will work for your pain specifically. So first of all, let's just start with the obvious THC, right? We know that THC um, works on the CB1 receptor. It's prevalent in the brain stem and the brain, and it reduces the pain signal. This is pretty standard. This is why oftentimes when people just take one puff of a joint or one puff of a vape, it's enough to greatly reduce their physical pain. It's pretty amazing. Um, no wonder the plant has been used for nearly 5,000 years for this specific reason. So I think THC is the obvious thing. However, there's a component of THC that I think is even more interesting. So THC also stimulates appetite. Duh, like it gives you the munchies, right? It works on the gremlin pathways. So when we don't eat enough, pain signals are amplified meaning we perceive them as more painful. Um, this isn't only about physical pain. This is about emotional pain too. And something that I have to be aware of specifically is that when I get stressed out or if I start to get, you know, I start to feel a little bit off emotionally, um, the, I don't want to eat. I have no appetite at all. But if I don't eat, then the... <laughs> my stress response and pain response is amplified. And that's just a feedback loop that you don't want to get into. So THC, by its mechanisms, reduces pain signaling, right? Easy. But it also increases appetite. So if you're able to eat more, you may experience less pain. Pretty interesting. Let's talk about minor cannabinoids next. Obviously, CBD. Um, and I say, I don't mean, if, in case anyone's new, hi, welcome, you're not supposed to know any of this. Um, I just forget that it's not like common knowledge because I've been working in the industry for 15 years and it helps a lot of people. So it just seems like one of those things you'd know. But that's why I'm here, because I would love to teach you about it. So minor cannabinoids. So CBD um, does not get you high. It works on the CB2 receptor and that modu modulates inflammation. As we know, inflammation is the root of pain, whether it's physical pain or depression. Interesting. So just by reducing inflammation alone by way of CBD, many people experience less pain. Cool. Amazing. We've been talking about that for like 10 years. What's more interesting is um, two things. Okay. First, CBG. We've talked about CBG in our other pain episodes. CBG is a minor cannabinoid that is non-psychoactive that is particularly good for um, migraines and stomach issues, gut pain, IBS, Crohn's, issues like that, that are quite debilitating. Um, so many people want relief and they don't want the high. So they're turning to these minor cannabinoids to get relief. Something that hasn't been discussed much, but Chris Emerson, the founder of Level Pro Tabs, brought this up when he was discussing his mail order line of products, that they have actually found that the raw form of CBD, which is called CBDA, it's the acid form, often helps people um, be in less pain, to experience less pain. Um, according to Chris, when you pair in the form of like a swallowable pill tablet, when you pair CBD and CBDA, many people experience even more pain relief. And of course, it's non-psychoactive. So that's pretty cool too. And, you know, we haven't even scratched the surface. Like we only know a handful of these minor cannabinoids that we're geeking out on, but 
there are hundreds of them. So this is only the beginning. Um, fabulous. Let's move on to terpenes. In the past, we've mainly talked about how terpenes modulate effects. And of course, if you've been listening for a while, you know that I'm like the energizing cannabis lady and I'm all about terpinoline, pinene, and lemonine. These are not really great for pain. So let's talk about other terpenes for pain. I, again, want to break this up into two parts. So the first part is that um, myrcene and linalol, luckily the sedating terpenes that are in like all dispensary weed, um, re reduce muscle pain. They soften the body. They allow the body to relax. They promote sleep. These are all good things if you're trying to experience less pain. That's amazing. Um, they do have a sedating quality, and that's okay for a lot of people who just want to sleep well through the night. Um, what's more interesting, there's always going to be a more interesting thing with me, by the way, so you should probably subscribe just to get ready. Um, last week, we had a pain re researcher on the podcast, Dr. John Stryker, who studies in his lab two specific terpenes that don't really have anything to do with energizing or sedating. Those two terpenes are beta carophylline and humulene. And in his models and the papers that he's published in rat models, um, he finds that high doses of these terpenes um, work to reduce pain by a completely separate mechanism. So that's one more tool in your toolkit. And if you watch last week, you'll know at the very end, Dr. Stryker mentioned a product that he helped develop for pain. I have just received it and I'm trying it out with a few clients who are in debilitating pain and I'll report back. I genuinely hope it works. I really do. And as we know, pain is so complicated that you really need a whole tool toolbox of tools to deal with it. And you have to know when to use the tools. So amazing. Um, two more points on how cannabis helps reduce and manage pain. So cannabis quiets the mind. We know this, right? It quiets the critical voice in our head. It kind of just allows us to be present. The neuroscience behind this is that our sense of self is actually constructed in the brain in every moment by way of the default mode network, which are a series of different brain areas that have to do with like autobiographical memory and experiences. It's like really complex and I don't want to get into it now, but what I want you to understand is that cannabis turns down the volume in the default mode network, shrinking our sense of self. What this does in terms of pain is that instead of wallowing in why me, this is never going to end. This is so unfair. My life used to be. We're kind of just present. And if we can put down the phone and we can maybe watch something funny, that can have a profound effect on our experience of pain and managing it day to day. Um, are there any other points I want to make? I guess just the obvious, like even though I'm the one who talks about energizing weed, like the fact that most weed helps you sleep, helps you chill out, these are good things because we need to lower our baseline of background stress so that when pain does arise, it's not as debilitating as it could be, right? We can, we have more control than we think. Um, and I hope that by going through these mechanisms of how pain works in the brain and how cannabis modulates our perception of pain, you feel more confident in choosing a product that works best for you. And these are the conversations that I have with my Savvy Relief clients. I work one-on-one -on -one with many seniors who, you know, they tell me what kind of pain they're experiencing. They tell me if they want to feel high or not. They tell me if they're willing to inhale cannabis or not. Both are okay. They're, and then they give me their zip code and I go to Weed Maps and I check out the local dispensaries and I give them a list of products that could be a good fit. So in case you're frustrated that the dispensaries seem to suck and not understand you and the bud tenders are like, what? Um, 
just come to me. I'll help you. So I hope this helps. And this is really like why cannabis is amazing, right? Like you don't have to get high. Um, you don't have to be sleepy. You could, um, but there are a lot of ways to just reduce day-to-day -day pain and live your best life so that you're able to participate in your life. And that's why we're here. So I appreciate you listening and I'm thankful you're here and I'll be back next week.